Hey there, it's Pastor Mark Work once again. And it's hard to believe, but this is the final habit, habit number five in the being challenge that we're talking about. It's gone quickly, hasn't it? This one is entitled Choosing Church. You know, I picked up a not a habit, but a hobby a few years ago of making things with colored glass, stained glass crafting. I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, this summer I made a series of these crosses and little items like this. And just to show you, you know, how it works, when you hold it up with a light behind it, it looks so different. And I think it's an amazing, beautiful uh, art form. Not that this necessarily is the most beautiful, but just to see colored glass and oftentimes churches communicated and continue to communicate with uh, exquisite uh, stained glass work. I know I've seen pictures and haven't been in person, but the seminary that I attended in St. Louis recently installed a whole church full of stained glass windows. They took years to prepare, and they tell a story. They tell the story of Jesus from his birth all the way to his ascension. And if you just look, you could go online and see them for yourselves. They're huge, they're brilliant, and they tell an amazing story, a story in glass. The church has found lots of ways to communicate over the years. In fact, for centuries, stained glass was used because most people couldn't read or write. And so if they were going to learn the stories or contemplate them, when they came into the church building, there, through the light that was shown from outside, they could see and, and begin to comprehend so many Bible stories, the story of salvation in colored glass. Nowadays, we don't use that as much. We have video. We have the internet. We have all kinds of technology that helps us. And printed matter, I can't even begin to estimate how many copies of the Bible there might be in your house or in mine or even in our church and school here at Grace. Lots and lots of ways we communicate that good news of Jesus to people, both inside and out. We know that going to worship, and I guess that's a big part of what choosing church is all about, is it's a good habit. There are lots of bad habits out there, but this would be one of the best habits to have. Choosing to worship. And as Zach Sender says in his whole week of the challenge on this topic, consistency matters. I know that's true for little ones. If they come into worship and, and they keep coming into worship, eventually they learn the patterns. They learn the Lord's Prayer. They can say it along with us. They learn what behaviors are expected and what behaviors don't fit in with that hour of the week. But it's true for adults, too. Consistency matters. It's a good habit. It's good for us. It's refreshment for our souls to be reminded again and again that we have a God who loves us and who would do everything in his power, and he is pretty powerful, to bring us back to him. That message is something we need to keep in front of us all the time. You know, some people look at the church as a bad thing these days. Institutions in general have suffered greatly in terms of their reputation in the last generation or so. A lot of people in the world look at church and they see hypocrites. They see exclusivity. They see people gathering like we're at a club. In fact, Zach in his book talks about, is your church more a hotel for saints, that is a resting place where people just come and hang out, or a hospital for sinners? It's pretty clear that in Jesus' time, he wanted people to come to him. He wanted people to worship God because their sin required them 
to be renewed. It required them uh, to find refreshment and to be encouraged for their life with God through the rest of the week. It hasn't changed. We still need that encouragement and that refreshment. You know, those are two options that Zach Zender presents, and I agree with them wholeheartedly. Sometimes we see the church as a hotel for saints. Hopefully we see it more often as a hospital for sinners. But there's a third one that I would add, a launching pad for servants. Because it's only through that connection we find with God in worship that we're able to continue our lives of serving him and following him day after day. We'll still have one more of these videos as we do a wrap up next time, but I'm so thankful for um, everyone's participation in the Being Challenge and for any kind of progress and advancement that you have made, that we have made as Jesus' followers through this challenge. God bless. We'll see you again next time.